Hi, my name is Kevin Mack. I'm presenting at M3 this Friday, August 5th, talking about digital style guides, and it's on the design track. Uh, with this presentation, there's a lot of content to cover. So what I'm going to try to do throughout this week is uh, put out short little videos about content that really didn't fit in my presentation or it doesn't really align to the design uh, side of style guides. So uh, today what I'm going to be showing is how you should kind of architect and craft out uh, classes or selectors uh, with styling so they can be applied to multiple different or multiple elements within HTML. So the demo that I'm going to have here is to say if I have an anchor as well as a button as well as an input that is a submit and how I can get these three different elements to all look the same and use uh, styles that can be applied to other pieces so uh, first off I'm going to try to make these all stack up next to each other so this is just for demo purposes only right here One second. So again, the goal is to make these all three look the same, and I'm going to make them look like a button. So I'm going to create a class called C button. The C stands for component, so it's a component, and it's of course going to be a button. So I'm going to apply this class to these three guys. By applying this class, so far this has really done nothing because there are no CSS properties added. Uh, what I need to do is kind of identify what I want my button to look like. So typically you'd work with your design team or your brand uh, team members and kind of put together the look and feel of what the button would look like. But I'm just going to be making it up on the spot. So I'm just going to say it's going to be red. Uh, with 20 pixel padding on the side, 10 on the top, and white text, and on hover we'll make it blue. Alright, so looking at these three, uh, they look very different. One of the things that you'll notice is the font uh, size as well as family are different. So for a button, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say all buttons I want to have font family effort, and I want them to have a font size of one rim. So right now the font size are kind of aligned, but you can notice that there's some other things going on that we still need to fix. One of the first things is on anchors, they don't have the padding around it, but, uh, but buttons as well as inputs do have padding around it. So buttons and inputs have two padding on the top, six uh, pixel padding on the left and right, and three pixels on the bottom. And you can find that out by using inspect tool, but that's just something to know about buttons and as well as inputs in other form fields. So we need to fix that. Uh, but instead of adding that class to this guy, I could do something like this and say input C button padding is zero. And the same thing on uh, the input. Oops, I'm sorry. Button and in, uh, input. So now they should all have the same padding, but you'll notice that there are some weirdness still going on here, which we'll be talking about. But at least these guys are starting to look similar. Now, one of the other things that these two have that this guy doesn't is it has a border around it. So I'm going to say border is zero. And they also have an outline. So I'm going to say outline is none. And anchors actually have an outline, so we're going to add that up here. So now they're all kind of the same font weight uh, or size. The weight's a little bit different, so we'll fix that. And the anchor has a text decoration underneath it. So we're going to say text decoration underline. Uh, actually, text decoration none. And we're also going to give it a font weight of 300. 
All right, so now they're the same font size, same padding, and everything around it. Now what I had done here is to target type selectors, so I increased the specificity of these. So this could run into some issues later on if I had, say, a helper class that was called like U space, um, and I said padding is equal to 20. So if I add U space on this guy, the U space does not get added because this guy has higher specificity to it and it's not going to be applied. I would have to do something like this to make it work. But that is going to become a nightmare when I'm managing to maintain this. So as you're kind of crafting out and thinking about the, the building and architecture of your individual classes and the way that they're going to be structured as well as then skin, uh, you want to make sure that when you are putting kind of Harsh selectors that have that have high specificity. Uh, you're only doing that when you know for sure that's going to be. So in the case of this, this padding border, uh, this padding has way too much specificity. So what I'm going to do is put it up here. So earlier I said the anchor did not have padding associated with it, uh, but I'm still applying it to this guy. Now. Uh, as you can see that I still have this uh, use space and I no longer need to increase the specificity and it works. So that's kind of a nice thing. Uh, this selector as well as this selector have the same uh, equivalent specificity, but it just comes later in CSS as most utility classes should. So it kind of overrides and extends it. But continuing on to this demo, uh, I know that maybe for all my buttons, I just decided that I want them all to have one pixel solid. Uh, one of the patterns I like to do is actually to keep this in here and to say transparent. Uh, and I can show you also why I like that pattern and why I go about that. All right, the next thing I like to do is to take the button and then create something like a, a default style for it. And inside this default style, I may include something like padding. Say padding is 10 pixels uh, on the top and here. So now I can apply that to this guy, as well as this guy, as well as this guy. Now, if I'm going to be following this pattern, I could drop something like padding here. And then again, I'm not overriding the CSS. So that's up to you. It is kind of a hit because you have two lines of code right next to each other, and there's really no need to do that. I can do the same thing with the border because maybe in some cases I don't want it to be one pixel, I want it to be two pixels. So I can do that same treatment for default. Uh, why that kind of works is it gives you more flexibility, and this is just kind of a reset at the button level, and then this is an extension or a normal or an extension of that reset or normalizing it across your project, um, which giving you more flexibility. Let's add this guy here. Now, one of the things that you'll also notice is if I add spacing in between. For the time being, I'm just going to go color is white. And background color is red. This one may be a little bit trickier to know without having done this same pattern a bunch of times. But if I do the space in between, so div plus div, and just looking at my DOM, I'm spacing this out for demo purposes, you'll notice that this is 20 pixels, but this is 10. And the reason why that is, is because this anchor does not have a display inline block. Uh, so if I just do display inline block, now this guy kind of works. Uh, why I like to do display inline block for something like a button is because I could still make it uh, the full width. So I could have it be the same treatment as like a block where it goes the full width by just adding 100% width. which just allows a little bit more flexibility. So the last thing I'm going to do here is also add one of my far-reaching kind of generic CSS uh, setups. So the star selector, and I'm just going to say box sizing border box. 
All right, so now we have these guys. Uh, they are all looking the same. As I said, on the hover side, I want these to be blue. Uh, whenever you're doing a hover, you should also do something on focus, so treating those two the same. Now if I go over these, they become blue, blue, blue. And one of the things you'll notice is that the cursor here is this pointer, and these ones are just the default uh, cursor. So what I will actually do is on C button, I'm going to do the button as well as the input. I'm actually going to say type is equal to submit. Cursor is going to be pointer. All right. So now they all look the same and they have the same cursor. And this guy can also be applied to other properties out there. So if I even had like a span, I said span. Uh, and let's just copy that. This guy. These classes are now flexible to kind of even fit the needs of a span or something out there. I could add the cursor to this guy if we wanted to, but most of the cases of using a span. Um, I would just like to use the type selector and uh, increase the specificity, but it's up to you to kind of put it out there. The last piece with this and trying to think of modularity and how we have the structural pieces is structural versus the skin. So I'm actually going to add something called like a primary button here. And I'm going to remove the color from button and add primary here and then for C button go dash primary the default color is going to be red so here we have these button setups here and why this is really nice is let's add a secondary Let me just make it be the reverse. <clears throat> One last little thing here. All right, so now I have, if I could spell secondary, a button that's red with the hover blue, a button that's blue with the hover red, and these guys. Uh, I could create additional buttons or I could create additional styles and I still kind of have the flexibility uh, to apply this to any, uh, any additional button out there that I could have. If I decide that I want all my defaults to also have a text transform of uppercase, I have the ability to kind of do that out there. And if I wanted to get rid of the padding as well as the transparent border, I could and give it additional treatment. So uh, if we wanted to look at this guy and say there's button primary, say, uh, border color is uh, blue, and for secondary, border color is going to be red. Do that on button primary. One second here. Oh, I would have to put this after this because it has the same specificity or get rid of transparent here. Come on. Okay. 
maybe you shouldn't have, but I'm not seeing it. Oh, it's on the hover state. Uh, yeah, so you can't see it. I actually did this reverse. I was right first time. Uh, or I actually called these the same classes. Oops, sorry about that. But uh, now you can see that they have the reverse. So uh, a lot of things that you can do, but the purpose of showing you this is how you can have a class that can be applied and then how you can have multiple classes to kind of create reusable components and then extend them and customize them as you are or as you want and need in your project. Um, if you are not as familiar at, with CSS uh, properties that are from the user agent or on a individual element, a uh, really good tip or trick is to uh, inspect an element. So if I do something like this, button, and I right click on this guy, and we look at the inspector. You can see that the user agent's coming from the browser and it's providing me all these different CSS properties. So if we look at the button example here, you can see the user agent and the different stylings that we're overriding and extending into our C button class and then adding additional pieces and parts as we kind of need them out there. So as I said, this was um, this was never really going to make it into the talk, especially this being a design talk, but I think uh, this is kind of an important aspect of the UI architecture and thinking about styles and uh, reusable components is very key. Uh, it's key for a successful style guide. So. I hope you found this helpful, uh, not just for style guides, but also thinking more about object-oriented CSS as well as architecture for front end. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Nice Transition on Twitter, and that's about it. Thanks.